All right, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to more 428 Shibuya Scramble. My name is Raven from the Sky. And let's do this. Keep out. Aichi's protests were vehement, but he backed down at last. Tatana would escort Kanan and Maria to the lab. That left three to try to apprehend Alphard. Kano, Stanley, and Aichi. Having only three people was a debt. Dicey prospect, though, so Aichi took it upon himself to head out and gather some backup. Tino got the car keys from Dasuke, then helped Kanan pick Maria up off the floor. Kanan watched him very warily. There was no trace of the blood-curdling expression the older detective had shown when he was holding Maria at gunpoint. His face was that of a man with a responsibility, the Tatano that Kano had always known. Are you sure you're okay doing this, Satomi asked Tatano? You might get infected. It doesn't matter. Don't worry about me. All I care about now is helping you two, if I can. He hesitated, glancing down at the unconscious girl he held. By the way, have Maria's memories come back? I mean, by the way, have Maria's memories come back? He told me tilted her head. Her memories? I suspect she took a blow to the head when she was abducted. When I ran into her earlier, she didn't even know her own name. Well, she seemed like the same sister I've always known when she came in here. Good. Then her memory must have recovered. Kano was shocked to hear that Maria had suffered amnesia, but explained why she hadn't contacted anyone after she'd been set free. All right then, Tatino said, we'll be back. Carrying Maria, he and Kano headed for the door. Detective Tatino? Kano called out, then paused tongue-tied when Tatino stopped. I... There were so many things Kano wanted to say, but he couldn't find the words for any of them. Once Maria is safe, I'll turn myself in. Tatino kept his back turned. The words were like a dagger in Kano's heart. Once this was all over, Tatino would no longer be a detective, but a criminal. Kano knew there was no alternative, but still the realization hit him hard. Detective Tatino, I stop your dither dithering, dithering, but... Never lose sight of what you're supposed to do, protect, ever. Kano snapped back to attention at Tatano's words. That was Dick Dictum number one. The advice that had kicked off the whole Dick Diary. I am not the one you should be worrying about right now, Tatano continued. We need to save Maria Osawa's life and protect the people of Shibuya. Kano bit his lip. Yes, yes, you're right. Kano did his best to squash his emotions. I know that, but Kano still wanted to express his regret at how things had turned out for his idol. Then we're good. Tano gave a slight nod and headed out the door. Detective Tatino, 
just before the older man disappeared. Can't no call out one last time. Be careful out there. Can I give him a silent salute? It was a breach of protocol to salute while in plain clothes. Aw. Oh, <laughs> am I going to get the bad ending for that? And without his cap, still, it was the best way he had to let Tatino know how he felt. I'll leave the rest to you. Tatino took one last look over his shoulder before finally leaving the workroom. Huh? That's an extra character. What the? <laughs> He's not even selectable. Even after Tatino disappeared from view, Kano remained for a long time in attention. His fingertips pressed to his temple. He squeezed his eyes shut, but still the tears had been holding back poured down his cheeks. There were only 30 minutes remaining until the time when Alfred had told them Hitomi should be at the scramble. They, need, they needed to get ready for action. Is the surveillance camera system still up, Kano asked? Yes, Tatsuke replied. It looks like what happened early was just a temporary hacking job. Then will you help us? Tatsuke inclined his head. What do you mean? I'd like you to keep your eye on the scramble for us. If anyone suspicious tries to get near Hitomi, let us know. Anyone suspicious? How will I know what's suspicious? Like that organ trafficker who suggested you kidnap Hitomi, Mr. Endo. It's possible that he might be Alfard. Would you be able to recognize his face? Asuke furrowed his brow deeply as he began to enter commands on the keyboard. Yeah, don't think I could ever forget. It's because of him that I... He left the rest and said. A moment later, several of the monitors switched over to feeds around the scramble. All right, that suitcase squinted at the images. I'm not sure how much help I can be, but let me at least at least try to atone for what I've done. Of course, and thank you. Suke's fingers flew over the keyboard, and soon all the monitors were focused on the scramble and its surroundings. Then he carefully adjusted the angle and zoom for each of the cameras. Now the whole area was under total surveillance. All they had to do was get their stakeout crew to the scene. Where did Aichi go? Kano asked Hitomi. I'm not totally sure, but I think he went to find some of his old friends. Hitomi sounded worried. Friends? I used to belong to a gang called SOS. Actually, he told me he was the one who formed the gang in the first place. What? Kano couldn't keep the shock from his voice. Aichi was the founder of SOS? How bizarre that the two of them would wind up meeting each other this way. But I guess there was a big falling out between them. So I think he would try to win them back over. Kano hadn't heard anything good about SOS since Aichi had left them. Things had ended on bad terms between him and the gang. Getting in for help, well, might be a lost cause. And even if Aichi was able to gather some people up, how much would Kano and the others be able to trust him? It'll be all right, Tommy said, if, as if since the Kano starts. I'm sure Aichi will bring back some of his old friends. And when he does bring them, I'm sure he'll choose people he can count on, we can count on. You really trust him, don't you? Yes, the Tomi said without hesitation. Then a blush came to her cheeks. All right, and I trust him too take about 10 minutes to get from Indo Electronics to the scramble. Kano turned the stamp. That's planned to head out by 6.50. Stay 
Stanley gave no reply. He had withdrawn to the edge of the room where he stood lost in thought, his expression uneasy. Kano decided to leave him alone for a bit. Taking a sheet of paper from one of the desks, he began drafting a plan for positioning Aichi's reinforcements around the scramble. All right, there we go. In about five minutes, he had drawn up a little map of the optimal places to deploy the team. It included positions for as many as 20 people Aichi might bring back. Kano. Kano turned around, surprised to find Stanley right behind him all of a sudden. The American looked haggard. Is something the matter, Kano asked? You need to go to the scramble without me. What? Where's this coming from all of a sudden? Please, don't ask me to explain. Something else has come up, and I have to see it. Sweat beaded down Stanley's brow. Whatever had happened, Kano had no doubt it was something major. And almost certainly it had something to do with Alfred. Stanley, Kano said. Please, tell me. We're past the point of keeping secrets. I understand. Do what you have to and come back soon. I feel like if I, he's still not going to tell me, even if I ask. I'm sorry. I wish I could tell you more. It's all right. I'll find a way to get by. Kano had a vague idea of what Stanley was up to. He probably felt he needed to keep things hidden, even from his own allies, in order to help keep Alfred in the dark. Or at least, that was Kano's guess. This was no ordinary opponent they were up against. Keeping secrets, even among friends, wasn't necessarily a bad call. Kano, promise me one thing. What's that? Once this is all over, you'll go have a beer with me. Sure. All right. Kano couldn't help but smile. That's a promise now. Remember? And with that, Stanley hurried out of the workroom. Kano glanced at his watch. It was coming up on 6.50. Pretty soon, they'd have to head for the scramble, but Aichi still hadn't returned. We need to head out soon, he said to Hitomi. She said 6.50, she replied. There's still two more minutes to go. Kano let out a tiny sigh. He shared a Tommy's fever and hope that reinforcements would come, but not her, not her confidence. If Aichi didn't reappear, Kano would be left to protect Tommy all by himself, and to try to apprehend Alfred as well. Would he be able to pull it off? If it came to that, he'd just have to trust himself to see things through on his own. He decided to head to the scramble with Hitomi right away. No, he'd never be able to do it on his own. He decided to wait for Aichi, accepting that they'd be, that they'd be late. The clock kept up its steady ticking. With each minuscule movement of the second hand, Kano felt the tightness growing in his chest. A minute passed, two minutes. Time was of the essence. They couldn't keep waiting any longer. Hitomi, I don't like having to do this, but we can't wait any longer. Seeing the look of determination on Kano's face, she gave a tiny reluctant nod. Keep out!
The Tano is not even selectable, so I don't. Kyozo Tateno gingerly flexed his right elbow. It was still a little sore, but it shouldn't interfere with his ability to drive. Does that hurt? Asked the girl called Kanan. No. I'm all right. Good thing I didn't kill you, she, <laughs> she said her tone matter of fact. You ought to thank that younger detective. If he hadn't stopped me, you wouldn't be here right now. Is that right? Tino looked over at Kano. He was talking to Aichi and the others about something. The last time Tatino had seen Aichi had been back at Katone's wake. He felt a strong surge of emotion seeing how the boy had grown into a fine young man. Are you sure you don't mind driving? Yes, it won't be a problem. Back when she attacked him on that rooftop, she moved too quickly for him to even get a glimpse of her face. Now that he was able to get a good look at her, he was shocked at how young she looked. And yet, there was a cold gleam in her eyes, a glitter of awareness with no trace of emotion behind it whatsoever. In his long career as a detective, he had never seen eyes like that before. It was a look he knew well. The look of someone who had killed and had done so many times. I'm so sorry about all this. Please look after my sister, Hitomi said. No, I'm the one who should be apologize. Who, who should apologize? Tino would have liked to go on to say that helping, helping now was the least he could do to atone for what he's done earlier. But he stopped himself there. Nothing he could say to Tomi Osawa could possibly earn her forgiveness. Silently, Tino lowered his head. His subsequent actions would have to make up for his crimes. He had to hope that this was possible. Kanan, you look after my sister too. Tell me about it once more. You two know each other? Tatino looked at the two girls in surprise. Kanan is my sister's friend. Tommy said, I just met her for the first time today. What strange series of events could have transpired for Maria and Kanan to wind up as friends? Tatino felt the prickle of curiosity, but now is not the time for that conversation. Asuke re reappeared. He had gone to fetch his car keys. You know where it's parked, yeah? He asked. Same as back in the day. That's right. Over where we always hung out with Kotone back in grade school. All at once, Titana was hit with a surge of childhood memories. The sky was a piercing blue. The journey of the cicades echoed in his ears. A refreshing breeze brought intermittent respite from the heat. During summer vacation, they spent their days here in the parking lot behind the suitcase house. As Tatino and Dasuke played near the stairs at the side of the lot, the blazing sun beating down on them, Katone would always come along with some iced barley tea for them. Two boys would race to see who could drink theirs up the fastest. The cold and fragrant tea flowed down their welcoming throats. Most of the time, it was Tateno who would finish first. Natsuke often wound up choking and spitting his out. Katone would flash him a motherly and sympathetic smile. Then Natsuke would grin back at her sheepishly and fuss with his hair. That had all been nearly 40 years ago, but Tateno could envision their smiles as vividly as now as ever.
They were in his only fond memories of his childhood. Tatino took the keys from Dasuke, clutching them firmly in his fist. All right, he said, we'll be back. He lifted up Maria and with Kanan supporting her on the other side, began to head for the door. Then Kano called out to him. Detective Tatino, I, it's, all right. We've already seen this part of the dialogue, it's just from a different perspective. Into electronics, Tatino and Kenan carried Maria up a hectic Dogen's Island. The parking lot was less than a minute away by foot. Before long, however, they found their way blocked by a veritable wall of people. It was a riot squad with Kuze at the head. Oh boy. police squad that carries out security and control activities in order to maintain or restore public order in the event of an emergency. Director Kuze? Tatino, what do you plan on doing with the girl? What do you plan on doing with her? I already informed Kano that she's to be put under quarantine. If she's allowed to remain free, all of Shibuya will be in danger. He then took a step forward. Tatino could sense that she was about to move in for the kill. Easy now, she said softly. As skilled as Kenan was, she was no match for an entire armed police squad. I'm not going to take all of them on, she murmured. I'm just going to take the man in charge hostage. Tatino swallowed, capture Kuze, and then run off? It could work, considering the time limit they were facing. He knew that they had to find some way to force their way through here. Still, given how far they still had to go to reach. To reach the laboratory, he wanted to avoid direct conflict as much as possible. Give me one minute. No, just 30 seconds. Tatino turned and started stared at Kuze. The two had known each other since their rookie days. Director Kuze, tell me, what is it that you believe in? What do I believe in? Yes. Weren't you always the one who said that you need to put faith in your subordinates no matter what? Well, yes. Yes, that's right. Because Kuze's eyes wavered ever so slightly. In that case, put your faith in me. No, put your faith in Kano. And Kano, he believes that saying Maria Sawa will let it will let us save Shibuya. Letting. He believes that saving Maria Sawa will uh, let us save Shibuya. I said letting. He's doing everything he can to make that happen. Guse's lips curled in a wary, a wry grin. That sounds like Kano, all right. Always thinking in such a simple terms. Usually the simple answer is the right one, sir. People like you and me overthink things. We make them more complicated than they need to be. Just consider for a moment. Will putting Maria Sawa under quarantine clear up this case? No, it won't. 
So long as we don't know how she was infected with the virus, we can't rule out the possibility that other people had have been infected as well. Tateno kept his eyes locked on Kuze's. Director Kuze, right now, what we need to do more than anything is to get our hands on that antiviral drug. We need to be helping Kano, please, sir. Kuze furrowed his brow and thought for a few moments and shook his head. Tateno, buddy, come on, I can't do that. I gotta understand the position I'm in. Director's voice squeaked into his childish register. Kanan narrowed her eyes. What's this guy's deal? She whispered. It's... Well... It's hard to explain. When his voice gets like that, it means... He was being completely serious. They were going to have to break through by force. He was confused. <laughs> now is their chance to make a run for it. Hey, confused. <laughs> Ugh. It's only Kuzi got out of pain yelp. Then as Tatino watched in surprise, he proceeded to lash the pain. Ah! It hurts. Have I been infected with the virus? The riot squad immediately rushed to the director's side. As Tatino stood there dumbstruck, Kuze secretly flashed him an annoying wink. It was a terrible performance, Kano muttered. Yeah. But it was a tour de farce. Force. As far as I'm concerned. Inwardly, Tatino gave his boss a nod of respect. Stepping past the riot squad, he and Kanan headed for the parking lot. Several members of Kuze's team hurried to chase after them. Don't fall them, Kuze cried out as he breathed in the ground. Well, stay back. If you can tell some real sorrow, you'll be infected. The riot squad stopped in their tracks. Tino and Kanan took the opportunity to hurry out of sight. Darting through some narrow alleyways, they arrived at the parking lot. There it is. Spotted a minivan with indoor electronics written on the side. Tino gently laid Maria on the back seat. She was still apparently unconscious. Once Kanan had climbed to the passenger seat, Latino hit the gas and sped off. the lab can and it's normally it will take about 15 minutes. But this traffic is hard to say. Tino avoided the stop the stopping go but he's out of taking side streets as he headed towards the weird station. Barricades and armored vehicles were blocking the road. Scale security efforts showed just how grave the situation truly really was. Latino hit the brakes. What do we do? Kanan spoke without taking her eyes off the barricade ahead. Latino thought for a few moments before arriving at the end. They talked their way through. They have to find another way around. They have to plow on through. A or C, I don't think it's gonna work, so we're gonna go with B. They'd have to find another way around, get in the back seat to Tino with Token and Why? I want you to hold on to Maria so she doesn't fall. Feisty grin came to Kanan's face. You got it? I think no way to Token and First, he jammed his foot on the gas. Out 
standing by the side road. What the, what the? The Tino reflectively jammed on the boat. Police crews are cut in front of the minivan, turning to head right toward the roadblock. Crashing into the barricade, it plowed through, not stopping until it slewed up into the curb beyond. Cars in fact had made enough space for another vehicle to slip through in the street. The minivan barreled on through the checkpoint. The Tino wondered who in the world had been driving the cruiser. Could have been Stanley. Phone rang and he picked up as he sped on. Were you able to break the route safely? It was the voice of Detective Kajiwara. The Tino had thought he was at the Osawa residence. A patrol car just now, that was you? A call came in from Task Force HQ saying that Kano had found Maria. I figured maybe Kano was planning to take her to Okashi Pharmaceutical, and so I thought he'd need to make his way through one of the checkpoints here. But the fact that it was you, Detective Tino, haha, <laughs> that was quite unexpected. He got out a weak chuckle. Gajuar, are you hurt? No, don't worry about me. Just please help Maria. I made a promise to her father that I, I'd save his daughter no matter what. Tino could hear the energy drain from Kajuara's voice. Understood. I'll keep that promise for you. Then, thank you. Beep, beep, beep. Oh, we crash head on through that barricade. There's no way he'd come out of that in uninjured. Sorry, Kajuara. Tino said to himself under his breath. Thank you. He bit his lip and stepped, stepped hard on the gas. Keep out. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for watching. My name is Raven from the Sky. If you enjoyed the episode, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to see series grow. Take care. I'll catch you guys in the next episode, all right? Peace.